Hey guys, Jay here. Today I'm going to be making jerky and this time it'll be made out of goose breasts. It's uh, leftover geese uh, from the spring hunt. I posted a video or two uh, of those hunts and uh, we're now moving into the fall waterfowl season. So I'm going to be making jerky uh, just to take out in the field. It's a great snack and it's uh, easy to do. So if you're ever wondering how to make jerky, uh, watch this video. Hopefully you find it helpful. Um, or if you make jerky and have some helpful hints or tips, please feel free to put them in the comments below. Uh, I'll be using uh, Cabela's uh, jerky kit along with an actual meat slicer instead of my jerky board, which would be a lot quicker and easier. I do like the jerky board, but uh, for the sake of saving time and effort, the meat slicer is going to come in really handy. So uh, it's a quick, easy process, nothing complicated. I'll walk you through it if, you're, if you've never done it, and hopefully you can take something away from the video. Okay, so let's get at it. Okay guys, so here's pretty much everything I'm going to be using. Uh, in no particular order, I'm using the uh, Cabela's Open Season Spice Blends. It's a, the jerky making kit. Uh, this is the cracked pepper and garlic. Um, in here, just so you know, if you've never seen these, one, you really got to watch your nose with these. Um, you will get sneezing fits. Um, it comes with uh, pre-individualized packets, as you can see. So. Uh, one is the cure and one is the seasoning spices and this right here, two packs, will make five pounds of finished jerky and there's enough here in this package to do 15 pounds. So there's uh, three packets of each, cure and seasoning and it's real easy. Okay, so you just mix and stir with a cup of water, cold water in the bowl and work it into the meat. Um, what I'll be putting the meat into along with the seasoning is um, zipper seal bags or Ziploc bags and I'm using the biggest I could find. So these here are almost 13 inches uh, wide and 15 and a half inches long. So it's the biggest bag that I could find at the store by me. I just got it from the dollar store and uh, I use these all the time. Once I put the meat in there and the seasoning and I, I massage it into the meat, beat it up a little bit and then I just leave this in the fridge for 24 hours and I rotate it uh, every few hours. Um, also, um, Ziploc bags, once they're finished, or not Ziploc bags, but uh, vacuum seal bags. I'm going to be using uh, the HD vacuum sealer from Cabela's. I love this thing. I've done review on it. It's been awesome. I've had it for a couple of years now, and I've done thousands and thousands of packages with um, vacuum seal bags. And uh, here I've got the Cabela's dehydrator. Uh, this here is the six tray and just so you know I don't work for Cabela's but I get a lot of gift cards and honestly some of their products are really good especially when you're you're trying to save money I mean I could buy more expensive ones but uh, this does the job it turns out great product it's a six tray I guess I could do a review on this one day but I haven't so easy to wash easy to set so dehydrator and then on top of that um, Here's the meat slicer. Thanks, mom, for letting me borrow it. You guys all, if you all have a mom, don't, don't get on me about being a mama's boy. She's a great cook and a lot of help in my life. So I've got to give a thanks to, to mom. And then on top of that, uh, my fish scale. Uh, I used, uh, used that to measure out uh, five pounds of goose meat, which I will bring you to next. Okay, so here's the goose meat. Um, I've been uh, thawing it out now for about 24 hours. I put it in the uh, freezer or I mean in the fridge story, and it was still hard, solid. So it, it needs to be semi-frozen, not, not hard as a rock. So what I did is I took it out of the fridge, the, the, the meat, and I put it in the sink with uh, just cool water, room temperature. And now it's soft enough that uh, it should be easy to work with. And uh, I did vacuum seal these with the HD. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of blood in there. So I'll drain all that out. These, this meat was brined. Uh, in a brine for 24 hours when I first processed it. So um, there's a video on how to brine your poultry or your wild duck or wild turkey or your goose. So if you're looking for that, that's somewhere on the channel as well. But uh, I'm going to open these up, drain them, clean them up. And if there's any trauma, I'm going to cut the trauma out. And then I'm going to begin slicing it on the um, meat slicer. And then I'll put it into the Ziploc bag and then I will mix the seasoning and put it together, let it sit for 24 hours, and then I'll put it on a dehydrator. So really easy, it's just um, a bit of time. So to make a really good uh, batch of jerky, I'm gonna say you need 24 hours. It takes you about what, 10, 20 minutes to, 
process at all and in the waiting game of letting the seasoning do its job of tenderizing the meat and, and dehydrating it. Um, so there you go. So let's get started on uh, getting the meat ready for slicing. Okay, so here's our first piece and uh, I guess I'm not sure if I failed to mention another reason to uh, be sure of cutting out the trauma is just to make sure that there's no shot left in the meat. Steel can uh, really hurt your tooth. But, uh, let's give this a shot. First time using it. Oh yeah. Get some nice cuts out of that. side here so you can see the pieces that I'm getting out of this. So these pieces are coming out fairly thick. So what I may do is uh, adjust the thickness on the uh, the next run. I think I like them just a little bit thinner than this. So I'm definitely getting about a quarter inch thickness there, which looks okay. I mean, that's not bad, but I'm gonna go for a little bit thinner. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, a little messier than uh, what I'm used to with the cutting board, but this is also my first time using it, but uh, wow, is it consistent. I'm uh, really quite happy with that. I'm glad I asked to borrow this off my mom, and I'm glad she offered it. I really am. Well, I'll tell you, um, it's certainly messier than what I'm used to, uh, but certainly much more efficient than uh, certainly much more efficient than doing it by hand. I'm just doing two breasts at a time here. Um, as you can tell, I just breasted the bird, so I'm glad my I tried decided to try this. Uh, the cuts are very consistent, and it's very easy. So that pile may not look like much, but uh, it really is. And I've adjusted the thickness now, so I'm getting the slices that I want. Right, so I'll continue slicing. I'm a little bit over five pounds, but the reason why is uh, there was some trimming I was doing to get rid of the, some of the extra trauma and shot. So what I'll do is I'll finish trimming up all the meat, getting it ready for the next step. And uh, we'll get back to it. Hey, well that right there is about five and a half pounds of sliced goose. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, how well this is turning out, but uh, perfect for jerky. I might trim some of the length, but uh, either way, ready for the next step, which is getting the uh, seasoning and kit ready to go to start seasoning the meat. Okay, so um, the two packets, one is the uh, cure and one is the seasoning. And uh, this here, it's, it's labeled right on there, or marked right on the label here, Cure. So I'm gonna go with this one first, because this is the one that's not gonna make me sneeze. And, and I'm not kidding you guys, um, this stuff is potent. So I'm gonna open up the two packages. One is the Cure, one is the seasoning. I have a cup of uh, ice cold water here. And it, it says for most kits, if you use them, not to mix in a, in a metal bowl. 
so I am not mixing in a metal bowl. I will uh, be using this corningware bowl because it's what I had handy. And what you do is you mix both packages together with the water. And then you, what I'll do is I'll put all the meat into a into a large. Oh, probably in the way of the camera. I'll pour all the meat into that large Ziploc bag, one of them, and then I will pour all the contents of this bowl into the Ziploc bag with the meat. And uh, and saturate the meat with it that way. Okay, so this is the stuff you really want to watch out at. So I'm doing it as a distance. I'm not kidding, this stuff is potent. Look at that. Oh, deliciousness. Pepper. Okay. So I'll pour in the water, I'll whisk it up to get all the contents mixed, and then uh, I'll add them to a, a bag full of the uh, sliced meat. I usually make sure I mix it up really good because uh, you want to make sure it's all mixed and dissolved. Um, It'll continue to, to dissolve on its own while as it's sitting in the fridge. But uh, whisk it up, and then the next thing is uh, pour it into a meat-filled bag. So we're going to now fill a Ziploc bag full of all the cuts we made, and then pour this in. So not kidding, it's a huge bag, guys. 13 inches wide and almost 16 inches long. So I'm going to take all of these chunks of meat. I'm not even going to cut them, I'm just going to throw them in. Random sizes, why not? Yes, it's a bloody mess. Easily cleaned up though. And the whole point of using this bag too is uh, you're able to grab handfuls of the meat, put it in here, and you can massage and work or knead um, the seasonings uh, into all the little pieces of meat. It's, it's much easier to do it this way because uh, it's, it's by volume it's a lot of cuts for me anyway. And uh, it's easier to do it this way rather than trying to mix it in a bowl and, and making sure that everything gets saturated evenly. But uh, there you go. So the bag's pretty much filled up. I'm just going to uh, clean up a little bit and then I'll, I'll add the seasoning and cure. Okay, so there's the bag, and there's a lot of meat in there, it's a good five pound bag. I'll give this one more whisk, and uh, I wasn't kidding when I was keeping this at a distance. This stuff is, I guess I'm feeling like a broken record, so I'll stop. So now all you do, and this is the easiest part about it all, is you've, you've cut it, you've, you've cut up the meat, you've mixed the, uh, the cure and the seasonings, Take your bag, bowl of meat there. Look at all that. Isn't that a healthy looking meat? Oh my. There were good healthy birds that I took. Pour it in. I'm sure my arm is in the way of the camera so you can't see. But I just poured it in. Now you just knead it in. So, you just get the air out of it, seal it up. There you go. And you can see, you see the, the brine or the cure and the seasoning mixing in with the meat. And you just, like I said, knead it around. You beat this meat up, make sure that that mixture gets over all of it. And that's why you use a Ziploc bag. See? Just keep working it in, working it in. You need it. And then, just because I'm particular about it, I rotate it. So I'll put it in the fridge. I'm gonna get a little more of the air out of this. But uh, I put it in the fridge and I do rotate it. And um, every couple hours, every time you walk in the kitchen, 
just flip it. As you can see, uh, I'll just try to zoom in here, see if you can get a better look at the meat here. See that? You can see the uh, the spices there, all those little dots. That's the pepper and the seasoning. And what I do is I just mix this all around. And in 24 hours, you have jerky. I mean, um, you don't have to. You don't have to do it my way. You could put this in a bowl, but I'm telling you, it takes up less room. You can fold it, you can roll it. You're guaranteed to get a better coating on all the pieces of meat by doing this. And like I say, it, uh, it fits in the, the fridge a lot easier than trying to make room for a bowl or a package because you can really uh, uh, manipulate the shape of the uh, uh, packaging. But to give you an idea how big this Ziploc bag is, here's a cell phone. So that's a big bag. Definitely a big bag. And it's going to be delicious. Okay, so that's it right now. Next step is 24 hours from now, uh, I'm going to pull it out of this bag, other than rotating it and every once in a while giving it a poke. Um, 24 hours from now, it goes in the dehydrator for about five, anywhere from three and a half to five hours. And then I package it into zip, um, vacuum sealed bags and I'm good to go. It's that easy. Okay, so back in 24 hours. Okay, so here we are 24 hours later. Jerky is looking thick. It looks thick and tacky. As you can see, most of the meat is coated with the seasoning. So now it's time to get it on the trays. In the dehydrator. So we'll get started. It looks thick and tacky. As you can see, most of the meat is coated with the seasoning. So now it's time to get it on the trays in the dehydrator. So we'll get started. Okay, so that's the last three trays because this is a six tray uh, dehydrator that I got from Cabela's. I absolutely love it. Just so you know, I don't work for Cabela's. I am not paid by Cabela's in any way. But some of the products are pretty good, affordable, and useful. And like I say, this six tray, the six tray dehydrator that I've got, I've had this for a few years now, and it's excellent. So what I'm going to do is uh, finish filling it up. You can see all six trays are in there with the meat on them laid out. I'm going to close it up. 
Um, I've got it set here at 160 Fahrenheit, so I'll probably leave it for about uh, anywhere from three and a half to five hours. All depends on how, how the meat uh, uh, progresses, and then I turn it on. So now I just let it run. Okay, right, so there you go. After five hours, here's the jerky. As you can see, it's it's dried out quite nicely. It cracks. Yeah. Check out all the trays here. So here's a piece right here. That's perfect. See how dry that is? It just breaks apart. So if you're looking for ideas on, on how you can use up some of the goose meat you've got and, and that you've harvested, jerky is a good way to go. It's easy and it's really good.